Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland, everybody. Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas, where today we're going to be taking a look at some more throwing weapons. So today we're going to be taking a look at all the throwing axes, of which there is four of. Some of these weapons are a little bit rare, just like the throwing knives that we covered not too long ago. The throwing axes are also about as rare as them, so they're kind of difficult to find. They basically use the same model as the hatchet, the regular one-handed axe, which is another weapon that's fairly rare throughout the Wasteland, too. You can buy these from quite a few different stores, or sort of. You can buy them from, like, Mick and Ralph's. You can buy them from the Crimson Caravan. They might have a couple of them. If you really want to get the most out of these, though, you're going to have to stockpile quite a lot of them, or you're going to have to spawn them in like I did for the footage back here. <laughs> So, first up, let's talk about the Throwing Axe, and then we'll talk about the DLC Axes as well. The Throwing Axe requires 25 melee and 1 strength wield, so basically any melee character is going to be able to wield this as soon as you can get it, because you're likely not going to be finding these until you actually get to New Vegas, or if you wanted to run up and talk to the Great Con since they can sell them too. But again, they're not going to sell very many of them. Either way, 25 melee is pretty manageable and one strength is perfect. This does 20 damage on hit, which is okay. That's all right for a throwing weapon or a melee weapon. 18 damage per second. These do take a little bit of time for a uh, swing up as well as you actually have the distance where they have to throw. So you're not going to have tons of DPS. And if enemies are actually like right up next to you, it's kind of hard to hit these. Sometimes you'll just throw over the top of them and that's really awkward. As well as at a certain distance, then any of these just disappear. So <laughs> you have to make sure that you're throwing them at the right distance. This does 20 damage on crit, which is pretty decent. That's uh, the same as its regular damage. So that's kind of to be expected. Has a one times crit modifier, which is perfectly fine. Nothing crazy there. Costs 22 action points, which is pretty low. The throwing axes are actually pretty decent in vats and that does help them. As well as just like the throwing knives, this isn't like regular melee where you just either hit the body or don't hit them at all. This is to where you can hit them in any of their limbs, same way you would with guns or energy weapons. Most energy weapons at least. Uh, and I guess all guns would count for that, I think. I can't think of one that doesn't. Uh, these weigh two weight each, which is kind of heavy for throwing weapons. Most throwing weapons don't weigh that much. Most throwing weapons are like half a weight, and that's what kind of makes them nice. The throwing axes are two weight, so you can cut them in half with pack rat, and that helps, but it's still one weight. So you're still going to have to carry around a lot of these to make them kind of useful, and they're kind of kind of be heavy, which is weird. Also, all of the axes have bonus limb damage on them, too. All throwing axes get a 1.5 times uh, extra limb damage, and if you dismember something with the axes, then you just instantly kill them. So that's pretty nice. For the general pros of the throwing axes, these are pretty fun, and they have decent DPS. Uh, kind of all the axes do, even though the DPS seems a little bit low in terms of like practical DPS, it's still fairly decent at like medium range where you'd be throwing these at enemies. They also work pretty well against melee enemies since you can usually outpace melee enemies and just keep chucking them into them. That's pretty nice. For the cons, these are extremely rare. They're very hard to find. They're just difficult all the way around. The DLC axes that we're going to be talking about here in a second are much easier to find in most cases. So they're not as bad, but the throwing axe, for whatever reason, is really hard to find. They also do kind of lowish damage, which may not matter, but it just might not be worth the weight to carry these around for the amount of damage that you're getting. So the throwing axes by themselves on my tier list, I think I'd put them into like C tier. They're okay, so long as you can get enough of them. Similar to like throwing knives, where throwing knives would honestly be quite a bit higher, probably better than the throwing axes. But these things are so dang rare to actually find that it's just not super practical to actually be using them in the first place. Let's move on to the DLC axes. First up, let's talk about the Proton Axe and the Inverse Proton Axe, which is the unique version of this. You can find this in Old World Blues. And these ones you can actually, at least the Proton Axes, you can find pretty regularly. They're around quite a few spots on the map. Sometimes the Lobotomites can have them, so you can have an infinite supply of them, which is pretty awesome. You can also use these to fix up the full-size Proton Axe too which is kind of cool. So if you find that and you find one of these, you can fix it up super easy, which is awesome. You don't need jury rigging for that either. Proton Axe also requires 25 melee and one strength in order to wield it, which is the same as the regular axe. Nothing crazy there. The Proton Axe does 40 damage per hit, which is quite a bit better. That's double the throwing axe. 32 damage per second, which is still kind of low, and that's just because of the, the throw time. These all have the same throw time, so they have roughly the same DPS. Uh, at least ratio to damage. This one does 29 crit damage, which is kind of weird. I don't know why it has that damage. Usually crit damage is the same as regular damage, but this one's lower for some reason. One times crit modifier, so that's normal. The regular Proton Axes only take 20 action points to use, which is also a little bit strange. They're the least action point intensive out of any of these throwing axes, which is good. Makes it so you can throw them more often. These ones also weigh less than the regular throwing axe at only one weight and they still have the same limb damage that the other axes do, but these ones in particular do extra damage towards robots and power armor. They also kind of explode on hits, so they kind of have an AoE radius when they hit things too. 
which makes it so their hitbox is kind of forgiving, and that's pretty nice. Um, these ones, I would say, are all around better than the regular throwing axes. They're also way more plentiful, because you always find these whenever you're going through Old World Blues. And these can be kind of useful in Old World Blues where you're fighting more robots, so throwing these at any of the robots can actually be pretty nice, whether that be like the Cyber Dogs or Robo Brains, Securitrons, anything else that's there, the Robo Scorpions. The Proton Axes are actually pretty decent. These ones, I would say, are a bit better than the regular throwing axes. I would put them up a tier. I'd put them up in a B tier. They're still not super practical because they are still going to be kind of weighing you down. They are one of the more practical melee thrown weapons, but I don't think they're quite as practical as like throwing spears. Those would probably be the most. And they're decent all the way around, but nothing way crazy. Uh, uh, they're pretty good against robots, though. The inverse axes are the unique versions of these, and these are extremely limited. You only get like six of these in the DLC, so make them count, I guess. These ones also require 25 melee and one strength, just like the regular proton axes. These ones do 60 damage on hit, so they do actually a good amount of damage. That's pretty high damage per hit. 53 damage per second, which is pretty decent. Also have a 29 damage crit, which is a little bit strange. One times crit modifier, take 22 action points to throw in vats, so they take a little bit more than the proton axes, the same as the throwing axes, and they also weigh one. They also do extra damage towards robots, and these ones are purple instead of blue. These ones are a straight upgrade from the proton axe, but like I said, you barely get any of them, so I'd also throw them up into B tier on my tier list. They're decent, but you're not going to notice a huge difference between them and the regular axes, probably because you're just not going to be able to use them. So maybe you want to keep one as a souvenir or something since they are limited. And then the last DLC axe is the Tomahawk. The Tomahawk requires 50 melee, which is more than the other ones, and it also requires three strength. The Tomahawk also looks very strange where it's just a pipe with some feathers, an electrical cord wrapped around it, and some railroad spikes that are being thrown. Strange combination for a, a Tomahawk, but I do like it. I think it's a really cool design for the Wasteland. These ones do 30 damage on hit. They do 20 damage per second, which is okay. 30 damage on crit, making them the highest crit axe out of any of the thrown axes, weirdly enough. These ones also have a one times script modifier, same as all the other ones. This costs 23 action points, so it costs the most action points, but it's still fairly low, so they're still good in vats. And these ones do only weigh half a weight, which kind of makes them sort of like the best go-to throwing axe, especially since Tomahawks are super common in Honest Hearts, at least the first time through. If you're going back to Honest Hearts, then they're not as common, because most of the time the White Legs have them. So if you can get a bunch of these and carry them into the Wasteland, then that's kind of cool. They still do the extra limb damage as well as the regular axe, and it does make them a little bit better, at least better than the regular throwing axe, so I'd put these also up into B tier with the proton axes. The axes are all kind of interesting. They can all be decent in their own way. We should also probably talk about perks for these too, because I forgot about that. There are at least like three perks that kind of count towards these. First up would be Heave Ho. Heave Ho is pretty good because it just makes it so you can throw these further. And that's really nice for the throwing axes because the axes will topple end over end towards an enemy up to a certain point, And then they will start turning and going horizontal. It's kind of awkward once they start turning horizontal. You kind of want to be hitting things at that end over end stage. I find that just to be a lot easier and a lot more consistent when I'm hitting enemies. But Heave Ho makes it so that distance is a little bit further and that does help. Piercing Strike also helps with these because it can just give armor breaking to any of these. So that's pretty nice since they are still melee weapons. Things like Super Slam don't work for throwing weapons though. You can't just knock enemies down. Although I wish you could because that would make it really, really fun. Also the Cowboy perk helps with this. The Throwing Axes and the Tomahawks count towards Cowboy. The Proton and the Inverse Axes do not. So you do get more damage with those, making the Tomahawks even more practical than they already are. Proton axes are still pretty good. Throwing axes do get a little bit better with that, but again, they're super rare. I don't think this would really change the placement of any of them, and the placement is usually based on how strong I think they can be in total. And the throwing axes can be decently strong, but they're not going to be incredibly strong um, compared to other like melee and unarmed weapons, especially more traditional ones more so than the throwing ones, since once you throw these, then that's kind of it, and you just need to buy more of them. Anyway, would I recommend the throwing axes? Sure, you can get them. Uh, if you find them, they're pretty fun. Are they really strong? They're okay. So if you're going to the melee build, by all means, try it out. If you're not going to the melee build, you still might want to chuck a couple at enemies. Proton axes are still pretty decent for old world blues. Tell me your thoughts on the throwing axe and all of its variants in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. How many of you guys use these and use them somewhat regularly on your playthroughs? Thank you guys so very much for watching this. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.